Hey guys, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. This time it is Sonic Adventure for the Sega Dreamcast. The poor, poor Sega Dreamcast. Coincidentally, this is actually the best-selling game for the Dreamcast. And, uh, I believe it was a launch title in Japan and... Or, uh, maybe, maybe not Japan, actually. Maybe just in uh, the US. But anyway, very, very interesting game. This is the title that took Sonic into the third dimension. The, uh, <laughs> very... Interesting third dimension. Sonic has no doubt had the most all over the place career of any video game mascot. I really can't think of a character who's had games that are so inconsistent across the board. But this was a time when Sonic games were actually still remembered very fondly. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic CD. Uh, I guess a few people might have remembered Knuckles Chaotix. This was kind of like a reboot, not in the terms of story, because this actually does follow on from classic games, and uh, there are actually some really cool references to that, but uh, in terms of like, you know, character designs, the you know, approach to kind of music and presentation, dramatic changes to the Sonic world, and you know, kind of mythos and stuff like that, it's a pretty drastic change if you're coming from Sonic 3 to Sonic Adventure. But First up, actually, a big change, of course, is we now had a vocal song. And uh, this was done by Crush40. This was the very first Sonic song. And uh, they've done a lot of work for the series in the years since. And uh, this song here is called Open Your Heart. And it, it's just one of the many great Crush40 songs for Sonic. You know, very kind of cheesy and, uh, you know, rock and stuff like that. But uh, very, very fun. I always really like a lot of the Sonic themes, and even like the really stupid corny stuff, it, like, even like Super Sonic Racing, uh, I, I get a kick out of I find all that stuff really fun. But this is going to be actually a very unusual playthrough of Sonic Adventure. Because we are not going to be playing through the story mode. We're going to be taking what I like to call a classic mode, or a classic yeah, approach. And uh, basically this is going to be bosses and level to level progression. So I've kind of played through the game and edited this together. Now, the reason that I've really done this is just so that... Well, alright, well, there's a few reasons, really. One, the story is pretty bad. The cutscenes are not good to watch, they are incredibly slow-paced, incredibly... poorly done, honestly. I mean, even compared to contemporary games at the time, they're just not very good, but... Yeah, the Let's Play would be a significantly longer. So I thought it would probably be better if I just simply did a... Yeah, you know, much more condensed Let's Play and just focus on the, really the good part of Sonic Adventure, which is the actual levels. But first off, of course, we have a boss, and this is Chaos Zero, the big bad of the game. And, uh, basically what I'm going to show off here throughout a few of these boss fights is that you can kind of abuse the light speed dash to do some crazy stuff like that. Hey, I'll play with you the light speed dash is basically a, a technique where you hold down the spin dash button until you glow and uh, kind of Sonic goes, ready! and then you can kind of go and unleash a, an attack which can kind of screw with some of the bosses. But uh, here we have the very first level of the game, Emerald Coast, and it is a really nice looking level. The music's great, the presentation's great, it's very colourful. It's basically like a realistic uh, Green Hill Zone, I guess we could say. And uh, this really shows that the new approach, which was basically realism, or at least a more realistic style overall, now, I personally disagree with that approach, but I do think that, you know, to its credit, Sonic Adventure pulls it off pretty well. And uh, certainly I can understand that, you know, with a new, more powerful console, they want to try and do something that, you know, took advantage of it in a way that we were all expecting, you know, graphics that were more realistic. You know, the idea of cell shaded graphics and all that wasn't really a big thing, or stylized graphics. Certainly there were uh, games on PS1 and N64 that used this well, but even so, everything was still kind of blocky and all that, but uh, here of course we have the famous Orca scene, and that is a really cool sequence. That is actually back in about, oh, I don't know, I guess 2000, 2001. Uh, I was a little bit late on the draw, but that is kind of what made me want a Dreamcast and Sonic Adventure. Just seeing picture, you know, video of that uh, scene on some of the TVs set up in a game shop. Uh, it was a game shop in Queensland, as I recall, that uh, had, had a bunch of Dreamcasts for sale. Which was uh, kind of interesting. That was really my only exposure to the Dreamcast. I never saw it really advertised anywhere. Uh, I never really saw it at shops or anything. So it was just this one guy up at Queensland where I went for holidays. So uh, yeah, even even around 2000 that is. Now, unfortunately, I fell off the wall there. That is the first time I have fallen off the wall in years. 
I actually revisit a lot of these levels uh, fairly often. But uh, for whatever reason, I just wasn't feeling at that time and I, I fell off the wall. But compared to games like, you know, say Sonic 06, Sonic Adventure actually has physics. And while there's certainly nothing like the physics of the 2D games, you do certainly have a fair degree of momentum and, uh, like, wall running is just you, is something you can only do when you actually reach a certain speed. You can do it on any wall or any surface. Uh, pretty much, anyway. But, uh, yeah, so everything is physics-based. And sometimes... I, I would say on the whole, that's actually a very good thing. Sometimes it does glitch out. Uh, Sonic Adventure is actually a very glitchy game. But, uh, you know, on the whole, I'd say it actually works out pretty well. And, you know, some people can do crazy stuff with the physics in the game. Uh, just like you could in the original Mega Drive slash Genesis titles. Uh, you can pull off some really crazy stuff with the Spin Dash. In fact, this is really the only 3D game where the Spin Dash has a use. And uh, you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. it. It's kind of really the... Sonic Adventure is the thing that makes me sad that the Spin Dash is gone now, honestly. Because you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. But, uh, just like classic games, hence why I'm calling this classic mode, uh, you pop open an animal capsule at the end. That is only actually in the trial mode, you don't do that in the story mode. Uh, trial mode allows you to replay any level whenever you want, and uh, really is the reason that Sonic Adventure is such a fun game in my opinion. Uh, not for the story mode, but actually just for being able to replay all the levels and do you know, do, do all the fun stuff again whenever you want. But uh, here we have the Egg Hornet, which is the first Eggman boss. One of, I, you, you honestly don't fight Eggman very often. And of course, I actually should point out, this is the game which changed uh, Robotnik to Eggman in the West. Uh, he was always Eggman in uh, Japan, but uh, for whatever reason, we got his name changed to Robotnik, and to be honest, I've always liked Robotnik a lot more. And hey, what happened there? So I tried to use my light speed attack on uh, Eggman, but it just didn't work <laughs> for some reason, so it just bounced right off. But let's see if I can do it. You can actually kind of cheese this uh, Eggman fight if you get the light speed attack done correctly. You can actually deal at least two or three hits to him, which will actually kill him. And you can see that I managed to pull it off right there, and uh, now Sonic is left orbiting the Egg Hornet. Still going? <laughs> and at this point I was wondering, oh dear, if I crash the game, but then actually I found you can just press the button and Sonic will fall back to Earth. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, a pretty fun little glitch there. So it can just keep orbiting him for all eternity. But uh, now we have the second stage, Windy Valley. And one of the really cool things you guys will probably notice is that uh, Tails is following Sonic. And there are a lot of levels in Sonic Adventure where you actually have this same mechanic, uh, this same kind of sort of duo aspect from Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. And, you know, even though Tails doesn't actually do anything useful, you know, the AI is still incredibly dumb. It is really nice, in my opinion, to see him there, and I, I really do regret the fact that Tails, you know, really fell, <laughs> fell away from Sonic, honestly, in the years uh, after this game. I mean, Sonic 2, of course, he's got his own levels, but you never see him following you. Uh, you know, he, he's just re relegated to mech shooting, basically, and kart racing. Um, you know, Sonic Heroes, of course, he is actually there, so I do really like that. You've got Sonic and Knuckles with you, but, you know, Shadow, Sonic 06... Uh, I mean, he, he's technically with you on the first level of Sonic 06, although I don't think he's following behind you. Um, he's just kind of... You, you control him for a short time. But, you know, Sonic Unleashed, you fly the plane with him, and I think that's really about it. Um, Sonic Colors, I mean, he's, he's with you in the story, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. I, I do think it's a shame that Tails doesn't really follow you around anymore, because I do really like that. Now, Windy Valley is actually a very interesting level. Because there's a beta version of this level, which is entirely different. They basically scrapped Windy Valley as they had it originally. And uh, just completely remade it, and the remade version is what we see today. And uh oh, I was... Uh, <laughs> gotta go fasting a bit too much. I have no idea what I just said, by the way. Um, interesting enough, the music that plays in this section of the level is actually a uh, remix of... I think it was Green Grove Zone uh, from Sonic 3D Blast. Yeah, one, either the Green Grove Zone or Puppet Panic Zone from uh, 3D Blast, and uh, or Panic Puppet, I think it actually is. Anyway, uh, one thing that this level does a great job showing off is it, it, it really balances the platforming and speed aspects very well. Because uh, you've been able to see that I've been doing a lot of platforming, 
but at the same time you get these sort of really cool fast uh, sections where Sonic's just running along these platforms here. And you know, even though it's, it's non-gameplay, it still looks and feels really cool when you blend it with uh, actual platform gameplay. And that's really something that Sonic's got a... That's where, where one of the tricky parts of Sonic is actually getting that balance right. Couldn't quite get that uh, ring box. Oh, it's an electric shield. Of course, making its return from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Uh, definitely a great addition to the game. It's a little bit of a shame that the other electric shields didn't appear. But, uh, in fact, or rather the other types of shields, I should say. But, uh, you know, I think the electric shield is definitely the best one they could have chosen. The other shields probably wouldn't have too much use. I mean, you're, you're very rarely underwater in this game. And uh, I don't really think a flame dash would help when you've already got the homing attack, so... Makes a lot of sense. Oops, I uh, got stuck on the railing while trying to increase my momentum with a spin dash. Oops, a daisy. You get a lot of these sort of shots that are just kind of meant to show off all the crazy things they can do with the level design. It's kind of like going on a roller coaster ride or something like that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. But uh, there we go, a special 40 rings box, which got me an extra life. And there is the animal capsule. Okay, so that is the end of Windy Valley and the end of the very first part. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. And uh, I'll see you in the next part. Poor old Tails, you can't quite get up there. <laughs>